It's like um, Paul says in Hebrews that God is the Jesus is the imprint of God. Jesus is the blueprint of God. And Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And so here's this blueprints from God, coming from God the Father to God the Son, to us as people, and how we need to come and learn and align ourselves to God's blueprint. And all this God started to show me and to reveal me through a number of experiences in my life. Growing up, I became part of a life of crime, part of a life of survival, part of a life of gangsterism, um, and eventually was caught by the police and ended up in prison for a number of 13 years. And being in prison, I became part of a prison gang. And when God saved me, God showed me that He's going to send me back from the very place from which He saved me from. And that's where we come to a place where I went back after my release out of prison, went back to the prisons and doing prison ministry. We eventually started an um, organization called the Blueprint Trust. And the Blueprint Trust is all about re-establishing the identity in this generation. Because in all of society at the moment, we have kids from a young age not knowing who they are um, because of the lack of fatherhood in our society. And the Blueprint Trust aims to restore that identity um, in teens on the streets, the youth at risk, youth that's living on the street, youth that's involved in gangsterism, involved in drugs. We have a number of programs where we engage with the youth um, that's on the streets. We take them on youth camps. We minister to them. We get creative ways, like the chalkboard project, um, to get them on board, to, to get them thinking and creating them a platform where we can say, but now you can voice your frustrations, your hurt, your pain on a creative platform. Then we go to prison when the kids have messed up and they went to prison. And then we sit with them, we do one-on-one -on -one sessions with them, we do group sessions with them, we do church, we do evangelism, we do the disciples sit, sit with them um, while they are incarcerated. And the moment they are being released from the prison, and then we also help them to reintegrate back into society, to reintegrate them back into their families, and to reintegrate them back into the jobs. And so this is the, the, the purpose or the key function of the Blueprint Trust. But we also see we can't just focus on one aspect of them. There's a whole holistic approach that we need to look to. Because when they come outside of prison, the families don't want them, the communities don't want them, and they can't find a job. And they're immediately forced into a position where they need to choose a life of survival, which mostly ends up back into smuggling drugs, back into using drugs, and back into the cycle of crime and poverty and imprisonment. So our aim is to break that cycle and so by doing that we also go to communities and we start community development projects. We start with um, engaging with community leaders, uh, building uh, skills development centers for these youth so that when they come out of prison we can equip them with tools in order for them to get a good job. Um, so basic stuff is like we help guys with barber shops, we help guys with coffee shops. Um, we help guys that want to start businesses or are leaders in their communities and then we guide them according to God's blueprint for that specific season in their life that they are in. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you have to count the costs. And when I made a decision to follow Jesus, to come in alignment with this blueprint that God has for my life, that there were costs involved. Costs involved that because I ended up in prison, I was part of a gang, I became a gang leader, and um, there were costs involved that when I turned my back on the gang to follow God's plans for my life, that number one, that the gangs were going to kill me. There were a number of attempts on my life for the gangs to kill me, but it was unsuccessful because of God's protection for my life. So personal sacrifices that I had to make was when I came out of prison, when I came out of this gang life, I had an option to choose to go back to smuggling drugs, to go back to being a gangster. There was, a, there was an opportunity for me um, to live that luxury life, but for the wrong reasons. But for me, in order to, to make that sacrifice and say, but I don't want to be part of that life, I'd rather live a life of God, I would rather live a life of struggling, of 
a life of experiencing the poverty, a life of going through the real life struggles, than taking the easy way out. So first of all, that was for me my personal sacrifice that I had to make and say, I won't choose the easy way out, but I will go through life and learn the lessons that God has brought me to. Secondly, I would like to say, um, the plans to kill me inside of prison and outside of prison because I chose this life for God was real. On a number of times I had people that later come to know Christ um, through me ministering to them that told me that we were actually planning to kill you, planning to murder you um, because of your past lifestyle. But then God opened their eyes and said them that I'm no longer the man I used to be, but I'm now God's ambassador, God's messenger um, to the rest of the world. And thirdly, I would like to say that um, coming into this space now of becoming part of the church family, becoming part of the uh, body of Christ. So even when I was there, there were multiple times when the church people or the Christian people told me that this is not God's plan for your life. God wants want you to go out and minister the gospel. God wants you to go get a job, go work, go do this, go do that. And that's the responsible thing to do. And so there were many times, sometimes people that I thought that these are going to guide me, they're going to be passionate about the things I'm passionate about, then discouraged me on my journey there and I had to listen carefully to God. God, am I going to listen to the people? I'm going to listen to you. And from that, I made a choice to fearfully listen to God and stand in obedience to what He has called me to be and follow God's journey for my life. Now, one of my goals is to meet with the president, to sit with him, to have a copy, to have intercessory prayer, so that we can move forward. Because I believe there are stuff that happens that only can break through, or the seal must be broken from the highest rank only. Uh, my second goal is to see sustainable living for our communities. How can we not just live for the year and for the now, but how can we start building a bigger, a bigger, a stronger community according to God's plans for their lives as a community? And then there's a lot of, I believe, um, skills that are busy going down the drain to bring that uh, purpose back into the individual. And it can all start from a young age, even from a kindergarten age. But to grow them up and to build or to make space and create platforms where they can learn, uh, where they can grow, where they can develop in what the abilities and the gifts and the callings of God has placed in them.